Hi guys, Johnny Bergen here with another Chicago Blues lesson. This time we're going to take a little detour to San Antonio and talk about a really, really um, obscure but exciting guitar player that I just love, B. Houston. Uh, B made one record for our Hooli and a few 45s and he recorded on two or three Big Mama Thornton records as well and um, he has so much fire and raw machismo and aggression and what's what I like about him is like Bother Smith and like Bilbo Walker and, and like a lot of great blues guitar players he might not necessarily have the biggest vocabulary of things to play but he gets so much out of it and he uses like the repetition in such a good way and he has a lot of impact he accomplished a lot with a lot of very simple elements and uh, he also had great tone and he has a lot of different great tones throughout this hustler record which uh, I'm gonna look at busy bee um, but the whole record, you gotta just go on the trip. It might give you a splitting headache because it's so raw and so loud and so crazy, but it's so over the top. Um, I think you're gonna thank me for it. So um, I'm gonna talk, I, I like the uh, the rhythm, the beat of this song is unusual because usually you just have, it's like that. But on the snare, this time you have all the way through. And I actually did a song years back um, called Won't Get Married Again um, off a of CD I did. That has that beat. I got it from a John Rencher song that he recorded in England, Running Wild, which has that beat. I just, I'm a sucker for that beat. Um, and it stays on one chord. So I really like to show like what you can do with some simple elements over one beat and one chord. That is cool. That shows you like that he's actually a pretty savvy musician, even if sometimes like he's bending out of tune or, you know, it just sounds like scratchy or raggedy or something, you know. That's not that important to me. In fact, I enjoy it. So um, anyway, let's talk about the rhythm guitar part first, which is played by, it's not played by him. This is this cool little inside chord, I guess, because it's inside. Here's a B flat, right? Kind of inside of it is like the guts of the chord on the D, G, and B strings, right? And just hammer on. And there should be another seventh, right? You could even do that. But I think it's this. Just put your pinky down on the ninth fret. Now I'm going to do a loop of that. Now, I like the... Now that's a pick. I'm going to try just the flesh of my thumb and then going up with my thumb too. So I'm going to hit my looper now, okay? All right. So now we got the groove going. It's like. bass on this record is amazing too. He's got this really distorted, rocking, massive tone on the bass. Um, anyway, now I'm going to turn on my drive Manic, which is a boutique kind of a just overdrive pedal that I got from Paul Asbell, a great guitarist who played with Earl Hooker. Um, so he's automatically a hero to me. But anyway, any old overdrive will do. Practically in a distortion will do. Just whatever you got. Don't stress out. Like, one thing you could do is even turn on a Wawa if you have a Wawa and just rock the pedal back a little bit. And uh, try to get an ugly tone that way. Just try to make it a little more ugly. So here we go. drive o time. I wish it didn't do that to the loop, but whatever. So... So, 
which is that's kind of how the horn part goes, which you don't really have to play that, but it creates a whole form. Bom bom ba da bom bom, and then he goes do 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 da 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 da. He repeats himself in octaves a lot, which is another savvy thing to do. See how that was the same thing in a different octave? So mostly what he's playing is all right in there. And he'll do this. And he'll bend it out of tune or bend it too much or whatever. But it's the energy and the drive of it that, that sounds so good. So, so then it has this cool break where he's like. So look at your right hand. Just try this. That's kind of before the modern guitar era of vibrato, 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 and now let's put in some more vibrato. It's before that. He does do some vibrato, but it's it's not something that he continually relies on. A little vibrato there, here. Not that much. That's it, okay? It's not this. You know, it's just not there. And I just encourage people to try to leave some vibrato behind some of the time to sort of let the notes do the work for themselves a little bit. I wouldn't want to live in a world with no vibrato, man. I, I'm not into that. So, but try it a little less and see how it goes. So, see, that sounds better than this. That like fatigues you out. This is more like. I'm just hammering on, just like in the rhythm guitar part, right? On the 6th fret. Yeah. So have fun with these elements, okay? And now let's see how it gets out of this break. All it is is the drums and... Um, and and him just this note this seventh note is kind of saying like we're winding up to do something here and then goes straight up uh, straight up blues too um, like uh, breakaway is just so much of a crazy song it almost completely falls apart but I love it it's like That's kind of the 
groove and he does something really crazy and he'll go like <laughs> So that just shows you how much fun this record is. So enjoy this tune, have fun. Um, anyone who ever, uh, I know he died a while back, but if anyone knew B. Houston or anything like that, um, I would be thrilled to see your comments. Um, and either way, let me know what you thought of this record and what you thought of the lesson. And do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.